Hi, this is Magnar, and welcome back to the next episode in my Run 2 Total War modding tutorial series. In the last episode, I showed you how to add your own custom shield pattern uh, to a unit's shield. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to change the textures which are applied to the models directly. So, what we did last episode was just apply the pattern over whatever it was. Um, but we didn't actually edit the model itself. In this episode, we will be editing the model. And I've made up a really stupid little Linothrax change. Bright pink for those of you. <laughs> just so you can see it. Um, and it didn't take me long to do it. I just didn't want to spend too much time doing that. Um, and I'm a terrible graphic artist, so I just did something really simple. Um, so that we can see it straight away in game. So we don't actually need that open, so you can close that. So when you create your own, if you want to go into the vanilla files, uh, you can find all those kind of textures and stuff in the text, standing for texture, folders in their respective uh, folders. So the armor textures will be in the armor text folder. Shield textures will be in shield text. I'll even just show you, I'll go into one of them now and just show you what, I, what they'll look like. There you go, man. This is our vanilla where we extracted everything. Uh, armor, text, and you can see it there. So I've got a number of different types. I'm only going to be working with a diffuse here. Um, the same way of applying any changes you make to any of these types of files, whether it be gloss map, diffuse, normal, uh, specular, it's exactly the same with adding it to the model. Um, and you can see each. There's a whole bunch of different type of armors, and each one has a specular, a diffuse, gloss map, and a normal for every single armor. Uh, each one do different things, but that's more for that's not really for what this episode's about. This one's just showing you how to actually whatever changes you do to add it into the game. So, first thing we'll do is we will go to. So we've already got the change uh, the the changed. Uh, diffuse for this Magma Linothrax A um, and we're going to go to the armor and we're going to find now the model which that relates to and so we'll go into the man armor folder and we'll get the same in our whip directory and we'll scroll down to that Linothrax that I did I don't... Um, Linothrax Let's just use this one. So I'll copy this model and I will paste it in our whip folder. Now, we can't open this with GIMP or Photoshop or whatever you're using, but we can open it with the hex editor. You should have this from the last episode. If you don't, there's another link to it down below now. So we'll open up. The model with hex editor and we'll spread it out so we can actually see it a bit clearer and it's a long file with a lot of stuff we can't read but there are some things in there we're looking at this part here by the way there are some things that we can read like this for instance but more importantly what we're looking for is this to add what we have done here we have to ch get this name, so we'll rename, copy the name, and we're going to put this name and replace the diffuse that this model currently refers to. So currently, this model here refers to this diffuse, Lunathrax Basic Diffuse. So we're going to change that now to re refer to our diffuse. The important thing to note when hex editing models is that you cannot change the size of the model. So when you type anything, unlike the texture arrays we did in the last episode where the size of the texture array file does not matter and can be changed um, without problem, the model texture array, uh, the model files, when you hex edit them, they must remain the same size. And the way to do that is that you don't delete anything, you only overwrite it. So make sure that you've got your insert key on so that when you type, you don't you don't delete it. You just copy. You you write over the top, um, and you don't push backspace. You can push Control Z to undo everything. 
but you don't do backspace. Now this hex editor that I use has a really cool function. I can go Control B, paste right. And what that does, it's like using the insert key, but with pasting instead. So paste right over the top. And that's the name. But well, there's something a little bit extra we have to add on to the end of it, though. If you look here at the normal and uh, all the other ones, and even before we overwrite this diffuse name, it has .dds at the end. So we have to enter that ourselves. So .dds, make sure you have the insert key on, so you're not adding, you're not inserting uh, letters as you write, you're just overwriting the existing ones. Okay, so now we've done one instance of th that uh, name, so we're going to copy everything so we don't have to put the .dds in the future, because there are multiple references to the vanilla diffuse file. And the way we're going to find them is just going to go Control F, or well, let's do it the old-fashioned way. We're going to go Find, and we're going to find the word diffuse. Make sure you select it at the e after this word diffuse, otherwise it'll just find this one here, and we already know where that is. So diffuse, and there it is again. So we'll click here, and Control B overwrites it, and then we can go Control F again, and diffuse stays in there. So okay, we want the next one. Control B, and then find diffuse, and again. There can be anywhere from two to eight or so instances where you have to overwrite that. And I think that was the last one, but just to check, let's go find diffuse. Nope. Okay, so we're at the end of the file now. And we've got all of them. Now we can save it. But before we save it, I'm just going to illustrate that the size has not been changed. So the properties, let's go. Okay, size, 174904. And now we'll save it. It's no longer red, it's saved. We don't need that anymore. Let's look here now. Oh. I actually looked at the size of uh, the texture, not of the actual model. Okay, so let's compare the size of the model now. So we've got, this is one we just edited, and this is the vanilla version of it. 63548, yep, see? So the size of the model has remained the same. It's created a backup here, the hex editor has. We don't need that, we can delete that. And we'll rename this to something which isn't vanilla. If we use, if we name this the same as vanilla, what we have done here will overwrite the vanilla file, the vanilla model, and any other unit that uses that model um, will then reference the new model we've got and have pink lenothraxes. We don't want that, so we'll rename it something unique. So let's say Magna Tutorial. Oh no, let's just call it pink lenothrax. Pink lenothorax. Easy. Okay, next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to add it to the to a VMD. We could add it directly to the unit, but I like to do everything through a VMD myself. So let's get the Linothorax ASIC, because I know it's going to refer to the right folders. Okay, okay, we'll paste it in there, and we'll call it Pink Linothorax. Open it with Notepad. Okay, so th this refers to a whole bunch of different linothoraxes, and we only want one. And we don't want to have a bunch of other stuff there. So we can actually delete almost everything. Now, these two, remember, aren't... These These two are the, the top two here. They close those two off. So the only parts we want to be working with is in between those top two and those bottom two lines. So we can delete everything except for here, we'll delete that because this is one variant mesh entry here. Um, now you can see here at the, in the first, the third line the variant mesh model, it references a tunic and what that means when you do that is that underneath the linothorax that we've done there will be a tunic and this is the tunic it will be. Then you have imposter models. Imposter models uh, to do with the uh, LOD, the, um, like when you're zooming out and changing the distance away from the unit and which models it uses. 
I think it's to do, it's to do with um, performance. So we're not going to change that. We're going to leave the tunics as they are. You can see also the Lunothorax also has it. So we're going to delete all those lines except for one. And we're going to rename here. This is the man armor. Yep. Okay. So we're going to rename that and make it link to our new model. So copy the name of that. Select here. Just the name. You, you want to keep that dot rigid model at the end. So paste. And we'll leave the imposter model as it is. And we'll save. And that's all we need to do for that. Now we can add it to our unit. So let's go to tutorial. Let's open up our Magna Mod unit base pack. And we'll firstly add these files I've just been working with. So we'll create the empty directory called armor. You can see here man armor. And we also need one called text for the texture. So empty directory text. And we'll add the text file first. Uh, man shield, no, we want man armor. Man armor, text, disgusting pink lunothorax, and then we'll add. So this is the text folder. We want the armor folder now for the other two because they're not in the text folder. So we'll select this folder here, add files, and we'll select those two there. Now all those are added, and we can save it. Um, now we have to add those to the unit itself. So we can open this up. Again, we'll do it just like last episode. We'll add it directly through PFM because it's only going to be uh, a minor edit. And what we're going to be referencing is CSS variant mesh reference definition, which means we're going to be referencing a variant mesh definition. So this file here. If, we, if it said here variant model um, reference, uh, then we would link to this file here. Uh, so just to make it obvious, okay so here, here are the helmets, not lollipops, um, and we've got two types of armor here, tunics and lunothorax. So let's delete the tunics, we don't need them. Ooh. So that, see how this, the slot came up there? This is to do with um, editing in the PFM and why it's better to uh, edit in a in Notepad or Notepad++ just for formatting. Okay, so now we'll change the... Let's just copy it. And copy this. Copy. This text. And we'll change the Linothorax to... No, Control-V it is. There we go. Pink Linothorax. And now we can save it and we can load it in-game. And there we can see the disgusting pink, pink linothorax and of course the magna shield pattern we added from the last episode. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.